Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Open Potato, and this is something a little bit different. Today, we are going to be having a look at Plutocracy, a PC game about wealth and power, where policy, laws, officials, and people are the only chess pieces. How do you play your game? Very, very good question. Um, this is the uh, Kickstarter, or the uh, Indiegogo, should I say, uh, page. As you can see, it was successfully funded on July the 8th, and um, there's a whole bunch of perks down the side here, and then there is uh, the crux of it. There is more information here. So, uh, what I think we're going to do is we are going to have a little look at the trailer, and then we're going to jump uh, right into discussing the game and uh, where the developers are in terms of making it. So, let's go and watch the trailer. 1870, America, the era of the Gilded Age of the United States. It was the birth of great corporations and monopolies that conquered the world. The time of the first billionaires who rewrote the history. Now you can start from the bottom and become the shadow ruler of the world. Your weapon, well, it's money, influence, and cunning. Now don't forget to find the successful companies and buy them quicker than your rivals. You'll have to be ruthless. Get control over the companies and put your own people at the helm. Absorb your competitors' companies and then dominate the market, gaining excessive profits. And if you have to rewrite the laws, be ready to lobby politicians and to expand your influence. And when the rivals decide to cross your way, you will need to challenge them. Corrupt officials creating barriers and intrigues against enemies. Only you decide how to achieve the goal. Join unions. Find unique friends. It's your agents of influence. In a hard moment, they will dig up dirt. Eliminate the character you want and open the doors for you in the world of power and endless possibilities. You'll be winning luxury items and pieces of art at the auctions. While gathering collections, you will be able to achieve necessary alliances and gain trust in the high circles. There are decades of history in front of you which you will be able to influence. You can create the most powerful financial empire. No one should know who really rules the world. As I'm sure you can agree, that is a heck of an interesting and intriguing trailer. And um, yeah, very, very, very cool stuff indeed. And certainly I'm very, very excited for the game. So it's probably worth just talking about some of the different aspects of the game, some of the different mechanics that we know about, and uh, a little bit about how the game will play. Obviously, this is all liable to change. We're talking about this before the game has uh, even been released in alpha. So um, yeah, there could be a, a heck of a lot of changes before the game actually comes out. But first of all, uh, what is plutocracy? So according to, according to this, plutocracy is a form of society defined as being ruled or controlled by a function of wealth. And uh, the main idea of the game is to show the interaction of the economy with politics and how influential capitalists make an impact inside and outside politics using money. I'm not going to read the whole thing, by the way, but I think it's really important just to get into the ground and establish what plutocracy is. Um, as you can see from, from these screenshots, the game is all about affluence, the game is all about money, and the game is all about power. So you can imagine a high-ranking politician, you know, just sitting behind this desk and making decisions about nefarious things and using money to corrupt politics and, and all of that good stuff. And certainly the trailer seems to suggest that if you're going to be playing this game, you are going to be doing a lot of shady stuff. So very, very exciting. Uh, in terms of the gameplay area, uh, it seems like uh, your your play area really is uh, is the United States of America. Uh, the game starts off early uh, in the 1800s, I think. It mentioned in the trailer, but I can't recall off the top of my head when it is. So presumably, presumably the time frame that we will be playing in, in is from the 1800s up to, well, probably the present day and perhaps beyond. Um, that remains to be seen, but certainly we're going to be playing in America and we're going to be playing uh, from the 1800s up to the present day is, is, what I, is what I've got a strong suspicion. 
Um, we'll talk about it a little bit more later, but in terms of the simulation of the political system and the economy, um, the way that that is implemented will really be key because they talked a little bit in the trailer about how you can buy over companies. Now, you know, presumably there'll be some sort of market in this game that will, um, you know, that will sort of set its own price and there'll be, you know, ups and downs in the prices and there'll be depressions and businesses will, you know, obviously, um, you know, do well, do, do not so well, they might fall, you might be able to start your own business. We don't know the specifics of that, but certainly there's 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 definitely got to be a sort of complex economic backbone to this game, uh, because one of the key pillars of this game, as you know, is is money, and um, you know without a strong economic system, I think this game is really going to struggle to to uh, to sort of make its mark. So here's hoping that it's uh, that it's uh, this, that it's rather impressive. Um, also notable is the is the sort of choices that you have to make not necessarily a choice between good or evil because i think the game sort of talks about you know money and power and a little bit of a and a little bit of a different way from good and evil you know clean clean or bloody and dirty money uh, it's not really a great way of putting it you know but um but yeah certainly the game the game gives you the option of being a stealthy in the shadow uh, operative or it gives you the option of being, you know, overt in your political and economic aims. So presumably there'll be a bunch of decisions that also tie into what you can do with your money. You know, are you going to launder money through, you know, pizza, pizza parlors? Or, you know, are you going to be a hardworking, a hardworking factory owner who, um, who treats your workers well? I think that'll, that'll, um, that'll remain to be seen. But certainly in terms of, in terms of workers and factories, it seems that that is going to be an element, and I think you know certainly the fact that the fact that the time period starts in the 1800s means that we'll see a significant chunk of the game sort of probably devoted to some um, to some aspect of you know factory workers and uh, mass employment in. Um, in in factories you know so the so the sort of conditions you know that um that you know can lead to strikes and industrial action um and certainly i think that that is definitely going to play definitely going to play a part um in terms of in terms of what you can do to counter them i guess we'll have to wait and see but i would suspect that um that they'll probably be you know you might be able to hire, you know, hire a man, a fixer to, to take care of the problems. You know, you might be able to, to bribe the employees, some, something like that. You know, I suspect that that will probably be a, be a fairly core aspect of the game. Um, and of course, we're, you know, building a financial empire, which sort of links into what we were talking about earlier about a strong economic system. It, you know, the financial empire and building up a financial empire. It, you know, this, this game seems like it is going to encompass a whole bunch of economic elements a whole bunch of um of political elements and it's going to be so so interesting to see how it ties all of these things together um and see how it all how it all comes together in the in the final product it really really is going to be very very interesting uh, it's also going to be interesting when it comes to you, you know your competitors obviously you'll have your you know your your opposing business your your opposing business owners but are you, you know, are the same people that are business owners, are they going to also be in the political field? Are they going to be running for, you know, political roles as well? Are you going to be competing directly against them? That remains to be seen. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see how, how that goes. Um, yeah, very, very cool stuff indeed. Um, 14 industries, a whole bunch of choice. Uh, so presumably there's, you know, there's quite a lot of, you know, specialization if you want to. If you want to become a farmer, if you want to become an, an oil driller, then um, you know, then then you can do that. Uh, no word yet on if you can uh, spread across industries. So you know, if you're a, if you start off as a farmer, can you transition into a you know a railroad tycoon, so to so to speak? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, the political aspect, just like the economic aspect, I think you really have to have such a you really got to have a, a solid um, political political backbone to this game because otherwise it uh, it's it's just going to be it's just going to it's just going to be not very good but uh, the way that the way that it's the way that it's sort of portrayed to me is that is that there is going to be enough sort of 
there is going to be enough choice, there is going to be enough diversity, and there's going to be enough sort of impact from the decisions that you make that you'll probably be able to pull it off. As you can see here, the executive branch consists of officials of the federal of of the federal and local levels. The governor's in charge of state welfare, treasurer of finances. You know, so there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of individual characters which will all pull together into a bigger political picture, so to speak, which is uh, which is which is really cool. Um, passing laws that is going to be fantastic. So obviously that that brings that brings into discussion, you know, passing laws that will exclusively benefit your business and not uh, your competitors, which is which is obviously something that you want. I'm assuming that it's going to have bribes in. If this game doesn't have bribes, I will be absolutely shocked. Uh, you know, but there's going to be bribery. Presumably, you'll be able to bribe politicians to do things that you want to do. Uh, you know, you can hire lobbyists give give election donations and stuff corruption and lobbyism yeah exactly so you know all of this sort of uh, political influence stuff is going to be really really key and really really interesting and um, the international political arena also something um that's quite interesting given the fact that this game takes place exclusively at least as far as i'm aware in america um you know, the way that they handle um, external geopolitical factors is going to be uh, super, super interesting. I presume, I presume there's going to be sort of like a bunch of pop-up events that will, you know, like the Great Depression, for example. I'm assuming the Great Depression will be one of those sort of keystone, you know, keystone milestone moments that will, you know, pop up and will have a, have a big impact. Uh, it might, that might not be the case, but I'm assuming that the way that the way that that works will 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 uh, will also tr sort of transition into a way that the global politics works. You know, you might you might have the Cuban Missile Crisis. You know, stuff stuff like that. Uh, that's just a thought. As I say, none of that's confirmed. That's just you know speculation. Um, agents of influence. Yeah, this is all this is all really good stuff. This is all the mechanical the mechanical side of things and how do you how do you exert your influence and how do you get what you want. So pretty darn cool. Um, yeah, this is another thing that I was going to talk about. The law and getting caught. Now, obviously, there's going to be some mechanic to stop you just doing all of this illegal stuff all at once, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and doing all that. However, the way that this is balanced is going to be really interesting because there's certainly... There's certain, you could, you know, you can bribe the police. If you do something illegal, you know, if you were to, you know, murder a politician or something, presume, presuming that that is, that is something that you can do. If you were to murder a politician, can you subsequently bribe off the police or bribe the police and tell them to stop investigating, you know, the, the murder case? I don't know. That will remain to be seen. The way that that's integrated and the way that the sort of, um, you know, the law is integrated into terms of what you can do, um, that's going to also be very, very interesting. Diplomacy is a key of success. Yep, certainly this game will involve a hell of a lot of, um, of, of diplomacy. And yes, as we talked about earlier, it's going to involve exuberance, wealth, and money. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that that wraps, up, that wraps up this side of things. As you can see, now we're just into to goals and, uh, and the rewards. However, there is something else that I would like to show you. Apologies for the scrolling. Uh, if we go up here, then this is the official developer uh, website. This is uh, Redwood, the studio that um, that are developing it, and this is the Plutocracy News, October the 29th, 2018, when uh, when this was last updated, and this just gives a little snapshot of what the situation is uh, with regards to um, the game development. You know, stress levels at 82%. 157 cups of coffee, uh, drunk, 113 bugs fixed, and uh, team morale is at 90%. I mean, I presume that those are just fake numbers, but I, they may represent something something more. I don't know. Anyway, that's not really why we're here. What we're here for is to have a little look at the, um, at, whoa, at the, uh, at the, at the features that have already been implemented. So if we have a little look at the, uh, at the economic system, you can see that in terms of in terms of what I was talking about, a strong backbone, it seems that all of these elements are what you know the developers have decided is key to the economic backbone of the game. So we can see that there's com you know there's there's company microeconomics, which is the way that um, that companies that companies interact within themselves, 
And then there's also macroeconomics, which is the way that companies, the companies um, interact between themselves. So company to company relationships, whereas company microeconomics is what happens inside a company. So as you can probably imagine, macroeconomics, I imagine is probably more challenging to implement than microeconomics um, in, terms of, in terms of a company anyway. At least that's my that's my reading of the situation. Um, share issues, bonds, bill of exchange, you know, financial instruments. Very very cool that we're that we're getting that loans, lending, and a bankruptcy system. Also really cool about that. Enterprise management strategies. I don't really know what this is. I suspect that this is probably a a top down a top down view of the way that you want to manage. Uh, businesses so perhaps if you wanted to introduce a certain pricing strategy you know if you wanted to if you wanted to you know um, outmaneuver uh, an opposing company you might intro introduce a different enterprise management strategy I guess that's just a that's just a guess though and um, company technologies again this is this is um, you know this has got to be the sort of I imagine that this is the way that companies will improve over time you know they will research technologies and that will help them become more profitable and advance in the future companies will develop technologies at different rates etc etc so i imagine that that's a sort of internal progression um of the company i imagine that that's how it's work, how it works anyway uh, macroeconomics we've, all, we've already talked about how that's the relationship between companies and um, clustering and population migration that's going to be an interesting factor actually um i don't know how that works but if it is then that could be a very interesting aspect because sometimes um, businesses can find it very very difficult to employ um, to employ the right person for the job and if there are you know population constraints in the game as well as you know obviously financial constraints as well then that is just going to add another level of complexity and depth and actually realism um, so that's that's really really cool um, importing and exporting I've got to imagine that this feature won't be too um, developed um much like the system in tropico the system in tropico was basically like you know you had you basically have a text box which allows you to select what you want to import and select what you want to export uh so i imagine that it's going to be some sort of a similar system um certainly in terms of in terms of the play area it looks like america is very very much the center so i don't imagine that the the importing and exporting interface and um and system is going to be too too complex but i may very well be mistaken um the political system as you can see 71 percent done overall the structure of each state's legislature uh if they can pull that off that will be incredible i don't know if that's going to be uh sort of an individual and i don't know what the differences will be from state to state is what i'm trying to say uh if they are substantial then that's going to be really interesting uh there was a slide over here yeah there was a slide over here which makes me think that potentially um you know potentially there's going to be a significant difference to you know setting up your business in texas rather than arkansas or in california uh, again that remains to be seen but that might be a little bit of a hint uh, in terms of you know that might be a little bit a bit of a hint of why that's taking such a long time uh, politicians elections and campaigns sponsorships in the states uh, i think that's pretty self-explanatory um the election interface is gonna be complex uh, certainly the fact that they've got a, a you know a politicians uh, election interface and an officials uh, election interface i think is 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 really really important because there is a there is a massive distinction uh, and i think the fact that they're separating that and you know dealing with that you know two different rates i think that's really really cool really really promising uh, u.s congress structure u.s congress elections again more elections love it america's got loads and loads of elections and the fact that they seem to be you know separating them and uh, working on them individually i think is really really cool the investigation and punishment system yeah so this will be i presume this will be i presume this will be the system i presume this is the exclusively political system that will be used for punishments you know so if the if the president is corrupt or if you know a, a, a politician has taken some bribes a congressman has taken some bribes then i presume that there would probably be an internal sort of system that that, that figures that out i don't imagine that uh, that it'll it might well it might be the system that you know 
could potentially put you, the player, behind bars, but I imagine that that's for the for the politicians there. But we'll see. Um, diplomatic relationships, yeah. So I'm. I don't know what this is actually. Fifteen thousand characters with unique characteristics. I don't know if that's foreign, um, foreign characters, or if that's just you know the sample that they have to provide, um, you know sampling and statistics in america so to speak i don't know if their pool is just fifteen thousand. i don't know if i don't know if the american population the population size is represented as fifteen thousand characters i i suspect that that's probably what it might be because you know having fifteen thousand foreign actors uh having fifteen thousand people out with the country seems a little bit ludicrous but we'll have to wait and see uh npc's actions um i presume this is just you know the the ai i mean obviously it's a non-playable character's actions but I presume it's just the uh, the AI and the way that the AI play. Perhaps companies play. Perhaps politicians that are not under your thumb play. I don't know. Uh, drawing of game characters. That's just uh, you know that's just art and whatnot. So uh, not really much to say about there. What I can say is that it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, it really sort of seems to it really sort of seems to fit uh, what the game is trying to do. Certainly in terms of uh, in in terms of the sort of cartoonish 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 vibe I, I really like it i think it's a really strong uh, vibe for a management game i think it's really really cool uh, diplomacy and negotiation systems with characters yeah i don't really know what that will entail i don't know if that's going to be the internal american negotiation system or if it's going to be the external i suspect it'll be the internal and negotiation system so between you know the player and the politicians and whatnot but again that's uh, that's just a guess and uh, the last section which is 55 percent done the other game stuff the luxury market and the auction i presume having you know uh, you know affluent um affluent items you know items of note like you know speedboats and expensive houses and whatnot i presume that'll be sort of I presume that'll be sort of handled as, as a trophy in this game, but again, that's just a guess. Uh, I don't really know how it'll be handed, handled. It might give you bonuses. You know, if you have a house, it might woo, an, you know, a politician or something. I don't know. Uh, the game map is completed. That's great. Influence agents are, um, are, are getting on there. I think we saw a picture of the influence agents down at the very bottom. Yep, the agents of influence. So we've got... Uh, a couple of people looks like they all undertake different jobs on behalf of the player so that's pretty cool uh, it seems that they're uh, slowly but surely being implemented the players achievements and m leaders table okay well, i'm presuming that's players achievements and leaders table uh yep that is probably purely a score uh, a scorekeeping measure uh, voiceover and dialogues yep that's cool sign design and sign track that's recently been worked on pretty substantially that's pretty cool um i'm gonna be playing this game irregardless of if the soundtrack is uh, is good same with the voiceovers um same with the leader table i don't really care about that stuff i care about you know the game and the the way that it plays uh, the game settings balance and game optimization you know shout out to the developers if you guys want me to test it i'm i'm more than uh, i'm more than happy to uh, to test the game on my youtube channel or privately you know this game looks absolutely fantastic and i'm uh, super 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 excited um to be um to be playing it yeah so that's the alpha progress we've already talked about the game uh, there's more information here you can uh, add it to your wish list on steam if you'd like the trailer which we've already seen we've already you know walked through the game features pretty darned extensively so on that note ladies and gents i'm going to wrap up this video and say thanks very much for watching my name, of course, has been Obed Potato. This has been a quick little chat about uh, Plutocracy. I certainly look forward to playing it. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.